Hey, what is up guys? My name is Runefire Storm, and I have just graduated high school, but enough about that. Today we're going to be talking about special cooldown for Pyram Heroes, as well as recreate some special skills from that particular game. Uh, well, you'll see a list of them right after this section, but otherwise, yeah. Special cooldown is a system in which, well, you have a counter of sorts, and every time you hit or deal damage, or every time you deal damage or get hit, the count will re reduce by one. And once it hits zero, depending on how the skill is activated, it will do something. Anyways, with that said, we have five different skills to go over, so let's get on with it. As is tradition, we'll be going over to plugins first, as well as some tips and tricks that help help me on the way. So going to our plugin manager here, which looks much more organized than the first tutorial projects plugin list. Uh, the only ones we really need are actually buff and states core, which is basically used for every single one of them because they're all required states, technically. Uh, auto pass the states, which well, it's because you want these to be on you at all times, if you had that particular skill. We also have base parameter control, which you'll see later. It is used for one skill, but it's not required, per se. More on that later, again. Anyways, t t the tips and tricks that helped me along the way are uh, Paralyze from Pokemon, as well as Power Charge and Mind Charge. Well, Power Charge and Mind Charge, it's mostly to learn about how to round values up or down, which I do do in this tutorial a few times. And Paralyze is because I want to add text, make text appear in the uh, battle log. Otherwise, yeah, let's get on with special cooldown. As I said earlier, I'll be going over special cooldown because uh, basically the next five skills we'll be going over are going to be derivatives of the special cooldown. So we're going to be talking about special cooldown itself first then go on to these five skills that you see here. So we'll, I'll be noting any differences in each of the skills along the way with special notes. We're going to go to the special cooldown of five, which starts off with a counter of five. As I said earlier, every time you deal damage or get hit, the cooldown will reduce by one. So once it hits zero, the skill will activate. So that's why I explain here. And even though attack deals zero damage, just like in Firearm Heroes, it'll still reduce the cooldown. So, it might be something to note. Alright, we're gonna start with Custom Battle Effect, because in case we are using passive states, we are gonna be uh, setting a cooldown with Custom Battle Effect. If you aren't using passive states, and you're just adding the state through a troop event or some other event, we'll be using Custom Apply Effect instead. So we'll be setting the user's state counter of state ID, aka this particular state, 12, to 5, because that's what we're doing right here, special cooldown 5. Then we'll be heading on to custom establish effect, which occurs uh, after the attack deals damage, I believe. After damage calculation. So we'll be checking if the user's attack deals, dam deals damage, so if the value is greater than 0. If it's less than 0, that means it's healing, so that's why we want to check if it's greater than 0. Uh, one thing to note here, we don't necessarily mind if it's HP or MP damage for cooldown reduction, so we don't need to put anything else besides value is greater or equal to zero. Then, if the, user is, if the user's cooldown, well, I guess we just talked about that, we'll be reducing the count, the cooldown count by one, using if the user's, uh, if the user's state counter, aka okay, get state counter script call, of state ID, the state, the state, uh, state 12, it's greater than zero. We'll be reducing it by one using user at or add state counter to state ID as well, minus one. That'll be it for custom, custom establish effect. Now we have custom react effect in case the enemy's attack, uh, well, if the enemy attacks, we also reduce cooldown count as we discussed earlier. If the value is greater or equal to zero, as earlier, We'll be reducing the count by one. Basically the same thing, except uh, do note that it is user for establish because it's the user who has the state, because the user attacking. But if, if the user is getting targeted, then they are, they're technically the target. So we'll be switching those 
between these two conditional branches, which are very similar. Alright, that'll be it for Custom React Effect, and we'll be going on to Dragon Fang. Alright, it is time to go over Dragon Fang. Now, Dragon Fang is an attack in which, if the cooldown is at zero, and the user attacks, it'll raise the damage by 50% of the user's attack. The user's attack. So, we'll be setting the state counter to 4, because Dragon Fang starts at 4, as opposed to the 5 we did with the special cooldown earlier. We has, well, we'll be having Custom Confirm Effect. Now, this occurs before damage is calculated. So we do want to boost the damage before it actually, you know, happens. If the value is greater than zero, of course. We're using this one a lot, so don't be surprised if you see that multiple times in this tutorial. And if the cooldown is at zero, we'll be having value plus the user's, the user's attack times 0.5. So 50% of attack will be added to the value. We'll also be using this script call, value equals math.seal and of uh, math.seal of value. Uh, ceiling, basically, seal or ceiling will round up damage by, or to the, to the next number up. Uh, floor, which we'll be using later, we'll be reducing it uh, down, as you'll see later. I know we'll be playing a, an animation on a user, which doesn't really need to happen, but hey, it's there. They'll be using the script called insert text. Now you don't need this, I just put it there so I can have a little bit more style on this particular skill, and actually every other single skill. But this is what you need to know. I'm not gonna say it out loud, but I'm if I remember I'll put it in the pin comment in case you do want to add text. And we're using center here so we can center the text, just we're using message core for that, so you might need that for this. They'll be waiting for the animation. I'll probably put that in the pinned comment as well. I'm not gonna read this out. It's not really well. It's kind of important, but we want we basically want the animation to keep playing, and once the animation ends, we'll stop the skill or we'll or the skill will continue on. We basically want the, the player to have time to read this text on the t on the battle log. Go into custom establish effect now. Uh, actually. This part's the same. However, if the cooldown is zero after attacking, we'll be resetting the counter. So we'll be having an else, else if condition. If the user's state counter is equal to zero, we'll be setting the state counter to four, like the original amount. And that'll be it for Dragon Fang. So let's go on the demonstration and then go to Moonbow. It won't be necessarily easy to demonstrate this because you don't really know the values of like the stats and stuff, so I'll try to explain it as I go. Uh, right now we have Dragonfane equipped as a skill. Now Dragonfane, as I said earlier, boosts damage on the next attack by 50% of the user's attack. And has a cooldown of 4. So we'll be trading off attacks with this enemy here. Hopefully until we get to 0. By the way, I didn't explain this, but if you do the same procedures as in the tutorial, um, you won't have to worry about missed attacks. So we don't have. To, so that's why we didn't have to check for any missed attacks because the uh, note tags, in it themselves, actually check if the attack hit or misses. So misses don't actually reduce the cooldown count. Though that isn't really typically a problem in heroes because heroes you don't really miss, miss attacks. Anyways, we're at zero cooldown right now, which means that our next attack will be Dragon Bang. So, er, so earlier you probably saw it did 542 damage consistently per attack. That one did 616, I think. <laughs> uh, that's not a good thing to end off on, but hey. Alright, next skill, and I missed. Okay, next skill. Alright, we have Moonbow as well as Aether. We're going to be talking about them in the same uh, section because they are similar effects, but Aether is a little bit more complicated, so we're also covering that here. Now, Moonbow is an interesting skill because the user, when the user attacks while the, cooldown, while the cooldown is at zero, it'll treat the target's defense and magic defense as minus 30%. You may be wondering how we're going to achieve this effect. Well, you could add a state to the target, like, well, that's, a, that's definitely an option. If you want to do that, go right ahead. However, in this case, we're actually going to be using Base Parameter Control by Yanfly. So, as I said earlier, you don't really need this plugin, but if you want to, without having to, uh, if you want to make the skill without having to use another state, then we'll be using base parameter control. 
send custom battle effect. We're gonna go to custom initiate effect because we want this to occur before any damage calculation occurs. And before, before the before, it's before establish effect and confirm effect. I think that's what it's called, right? Confirm. It's kind of weird, but you do have to do this initiate effect. Anyways, to set the target's defense and magic defense to 30% to minus 30%, we're using the script call found in base parameter control. Target set defense to target defense times 0.7 because we're going to be setting to 70%, which is 30% less than 100%. Same thing with magic defense. Basically, a copy, but replacing. Yeah. Go into custom confirm effect. Uh, if cooldown is 0, same deal here. If this is 0, we'll be playing animation, playing some text. Instead, say Moombo. Waiting for the animation, exactly the same thing. And establish effect is actually pretty much the same thing as well. However, we also have this bottom part right here. Now, Moombo, since we did change the stats of the target, we also want to clear those target changes or they'll stay there forever because that's how it works. We're using target.clear parameter plus or param plus, which again is a script call found in base parameter control. So we can clear every single stat change. Going on to Aether, which is very similar, except first of all, it's 50% of defense and magic defense. So going down here, it's 50%. However, it also heals 50% of the damage it deals to the target. Now, since we want that to occur after the, uh, well, I mean, I guess since it's after, well, we're gonna have this, we're gonna have the healing take place after the target is dealt damage. So we're gonna be going all the way down here, replacing this with Aether. Going even further, we're gonna go to after the established effect. So basically, we still have the reset counter, but we're gonna set the reset counter after the healing. But this section is all about the healing. So we're gonna gain HP equal to 50% of the damage dealt. Now we're gonna set a variable, quote unquote variable, for a heal, which will, uh, get the math ceiling, or round up the value of damage dealt divided by 2. So if it's 101 damage, well, it'll be 50.5, then we'll be producing, well we'll be raising that to 51 because we want more healing. So we'll be healing 51 in this case, if there, it was a 101 damage attack. If we're rounding down, it'd be 50, so. Then we'll be setting the state counter to 5. So typically, so typical cooldown resetting. And same thing here, we're gonna clear the parameter bonus or the parameter changes. And that's about it for Aether, so we'll be going over Moonbow and Aether right here. Alright, going on to Moonbow, and I probably should have recorded Aether along with this, but actually no. Putting two cooldowns right next to each other is not a good idea. Okay, I'll cover Moonbow quickly then. Moonbow is a skill that has a cooldown of 2 and treats the foe's defense and magic defense as minus 30%. As you saw earlier, we deal 542 damage, which is quite a bit, but you're not going to see much change with Moonbow because it is only 30% of the target's defense and magic defense. I did set the enemy's defense and magic defense to 50, so it only raises it by like 15. Uh, I don't really know why. It's strange. Is 15... I don't know, I had some weird calculation for the attack, so that probably has something to do with it. Regardless, it did raise damage, so I consider that a success already. Now, going on to Aether. Going on to Aether after doing Moonbow, because totally smooth transition, right? Uh, Aether has a cooldown 5, so we should probably start on that. I'll explain on the way. Uh, like Moonbow, it does treat the target's uh, defense and magic defense as a little bit lower as they typically would. In this case, 50%, but it also heals 50% damage to the user. So, we'll be demonstrating that after we take one hit right here, and we'll be doing an attack right here. As you can see on the right side, it healed an amount, 271, which is roughly about half of what we do to the target, which is about... Wait, I need to check that again, actually. Because, isn't 540 the same thing? I might have to fix that, that's not good. Yep, 
Yikes. Okay. Problem, problem, problem found. Uh, I'll be going over that, hopefully... Oh, I'm not doing that at the end, but hopefully at some point... Maybe in the description. The description hopefully will fix that, okay. Uh, hopefully something works out there. Alright, going to the next skill. Now we're gonna be going over Aegis, or Aegis if you prefer. I do prefer Aegis, but in this case, I don't know what I'm gonna pronounce it. Now, Aegis is... well, if cooldown is zero and the enemy attacks, so instead of the user attacking, we reduce the damage by 50%. It is important to note that in Fire Emblem Heroes, this skill is only activated if the, if the uh, damaging attack is from afar. The other, the counterpart that is used uh, for uh, close-up attacks or melee attacks is Pavis or Pavis. Man, why are both of these like names that you can pronounce multiple ways? Anyways, we'll be setting the state counter for for this particular state to 3, because in Environment Heroes it's 3. Now, we'll be doing the same thing, well, kind of a similar thing. This is basically, this is the exact same thing as it is in Special Cooldown 5, so Custom Establish Effect is the one that's bare bones instead of Custom React Effect. Then we go on to Custom, custom React Effect. This is where we'll be checking if cooldown is 0. So, same thing we had earlier. We'll be multiplying the damage by 50%. So not multiplying it by 150% or multiplying it by 50% so we, so we have to damage, or you can divide it by 2, whatever you want to do. We'll be rounding down damage so we reduce the, the amount of damage we take because you do want to reduce instead of, you know, raising it. So instead of using math ceiling, we'll be using math floor for the value. And animation, text, animation, weighting is basically the same thing. And we'll be resetting the counter in the same custom react effect uh, note tags to 3. Alright, that's it for Aegis, and now we'll be going on to Imbue after this demonstration, of course. Alright, going on to Aegis here, which reduces the next attack taken by 50%. It has a cooldown of 3, and uh, let's hopefully reduce the cooldown to 0 first. Well, it missed, but... Okay, so, so the problem here is that you can't tell it's gonna reduce it by 50% because I didn't set it to, uh... to 100. Because the damage will do zero. You might have to take, take my word for this, actually. Which you probably will have to. I'm afraid. But I can assure you, with what we have set up in the buff, in the state, it does indeed work that it reduces the damage by 50%. I can confirm that. Just, you'll have to take more word for, the, for that. Alright, going on to the next skill, because this demonstration is in shambles. The reason why we're going to imbue last is because healing uses negative values instead of positive values, so it might be a little bit more complicated, so that's why we're doing it after all the rest. Though it is going to be more similar to the uh, Dragon Fang and Moonbow skills, because it is when the user initiates. Let's, let's get right into it. If cooldown is 0 and the user heals, raise healing by 10% of the target's max of the target's max, max HP. So in Farm Heroes, it only raises it by a flat 10 HP, which in RPG Maker, or in RPGs in general, depending on the game, that might be okay, but typically, we're just going to raise it by 10% of the target's max HP. So, setting a custom battle effect here. We'll be setting the state counter to 1, actually, because Imbue only has a cooldown of 1. Maybe it's 2. It might be actually 2. In that case, no, no, it's Heaven Light. I think Imbue is actually 1. Anyways, if the value is less than 0, aka healing, so that's why we have value is less than 0. If the cooldown is 0, so same thing as before, if the user state counter is equal to 0, we're subtracting by 10% of the target's math HP, because, again, since it's negative values, if we were to add it by 10%, then, it would be, then we might actually tread damage territory. So if you're healing 1 HP, and the target says, say, has like 100 HP, we'll actually be doing 9 damage to them, which is not good if we if we actually add the value. So instead, we'll be subtracting it, so we instead heal 11 HP. So value minus the target's max HP times 0 0.1, so 10%. Then we'll be rounding down, quote-unquote, healing. Technically, it's 
rounding up healing, but again, it's negative value, so we're rounding it down. So we'll be using mat.floor. Playing animation, playing text, waiting for the animation. Now going on to custom establish effect. Uh, healing also reduces cooldown count, so we don't need a conditional branch to check if the, if the value is greater or equal to zero. So if it's less than zero, it still works as reducing cooldown. So that's the only thing that's changed here. And uh, if cooldown is zero after attacking, aka healing, so it's not really attacking, it's healing. We'll be resetting the counter as per as typically, because it's, it's because it's when the user initiates, we had to put this in the establish effect just like Dragon Fang and such. React effect is basically the same thing though. But since we don't, we, since the enemy doesn't typically heal the, the enemy, or the, since the enemy doesn't typically heal the party members, we don't really need to touch this. But if you're if the enemy does heal the party members and you, and you want to change it so you don't need this conditional branch, right here, go right ahead. Alright, going on to the demonstration, and then the outro. Moving on to the final demonstration here, we have Imbue, which, again, raises healing by 50%, sorry, 10% of the target's max HP, 50% is quite a bit. Uh, if we go to heal here, we have a, well, we have a skill called heal. Heals 100 HP. So we're gonna use it right now, and as you see in the bottom, it reduces our cooldown to zero. Uh, unlike the others, which healing would not reduce it to zero. Though, I suppose potions might actually reduce it to zero as well, so that might be a problem. That's unfortunate. But if we go to heal right now, and since we are at cooldown count of zero, it'll heal 635, which is uh, 100 plus 535, which 535 is 10% of 5350. So yeah, that'll be all for demonstrations, and now we'll be going on to the outro. Alright, hey, Runefire Storm in the outro here. Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial that I quite like to make. Um, this one has been quite interesting, actually. And uh, it took a few weeks to get it into fruition, but hey, here we are. Problem is it'll be probably uploaded like a week after, which is kind of sad. But I've been really busy this week. Today's June 11th, so we'll see. Speaking of June 11th, uh, I've officially graduated high school. And this weekend, I'll be celebrating that. So, that's probably one reason why this tutorial is not coming out this weekend. So, apologies for that. I know it's been a long time since the last tutorial, but... You know, sometimes it's, it's discouraging making tutorials, because... Like, you gotta get pretty much everything right, unless you fix it in the comments. There's also the fact that... Well... <laughs> most of my tutorials get disliked in the, within the first 24 hours. But, I don't really mind that too much, actually. It, it's, I've gotten used to it at this point. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, next tutorial, I do have an idea. The thing is, it's going to be really short. And then I also have other tutorial ideas I have to make. And hopefully, eventually, we'll reach tutorial number 50. And uh, I'll have a very certain... T I have a certain type of video I want to make after tutorial 50, so... It'll be related to tutorials, yes. So we'll see when that ha when that happens. And all right, I will see y'all later.